Hello YouTube! Welcome to the fourth episode of my Digital Aquarium Controller Series. Today we're going to look at the Adreno Hat built to interface all of the subcomponents used in this controller and the power supply that will drive the devices. You may remember, back from episode one, that the core objective is to have all components modular and easily replaceable, including the Adreno board itself. The pin connectors on an off-the-shelf Adreno do not meet this requirement very well. So, to meet this need, a second board, or hat, is used. This plugs into the Mega, and they can provide keyed connectors for each sensor or relay board to connect to. In addition, it allows the connectors to have power and ground routed to each subcomponent without having to use the regulator built into the Adreno. The circuit board used for this hat can be printed and etched to your specifications, but since I only needed one, I used this off-the-shelf option and made some modifications. The first step was to determine what components would be used and what pins they would connect to on the Adreno. Much of this was determined in the original draft of the plan, but once this hat is wired, it'd be difficult to change. I took this task to pencil and paper to solidify the layout and the pin assignments. Sorry, these plans aren't quite as pretty. From here, I determined how many plugs and what type would be needed so I could order my parts. Each connector has to have enough pins for data and power for the device. I determined I needed 15 connectors and a few pin headers for the real-time clock. While they were shipping, I sketched out the layout for the board. I chose to remove any existing headers that connected to pins that would have an assigned task, and I arranged the keyed connectors so that I could run straight power rails to them and so that they'd be reasonably spread out in the space that I had. Having a solid plan, the last step, once the parts arrived, was to solder it all in place. This went pretty much as you would expect. With roughly 70 jumper wires, it was a lot of soldering. If I was to do it again, I'd spring the $20 and have the board etched. A lesson I can pass on to you. But this works. I printed up some labels and labeled each connector, male and female. The RTC board mounts directly onto this hat. Everything else connects to one of the wire headers. One of the most important connections is power. The relays, Raspberry Pi, and sensors need a stable 5 volts. The Adreno and solenoid valves need 12 volts, which the Adreno will regulate back down to 5. The power will come from a beefy PC power supply. I used some spare PC power splitter cables to make the connectors. One end was cut off and the female connector was added, using the same process I described in episode 3. When plugged into the power supply, this will give me a connection to 12 volts and 5 volts that can be used for almost everything. The lights and fans will get a similar but separate connection through the power relays. The power itself comes from the PC power supply. The controller, sensors, and servos only require a moderate amount of power, so there's many inexpensive options to choose from. However, I wish to run my 12-volt LED reef lights from this also. They need roughly 300 watts at full power, so I need something beefy. A bit of shopping, and you can find plenty of PC supplies that provide 30 or more amps on the 12-volt line for under 50 bucks, in addition to a well-regulated 5-volt and 3.3-volt lines. This is the most economical choice. There's one small modification you need to make in order to use a PC power supply like this. A PC usually has a button on the front panel to turn it on and off. The power supply has electronics to sense that button state. The default state is off. So, if we want the supply to come on, we need to convince it that that button is pressed. To do so, we locate the green wire that connects to the large 20 or 24 pin connector, cut it and one of the black wires, strip a bit off the end of each, and then solder them together. Apply a bit of heat shrink to make the work neat, and you're done. Plug it in, turn it on, the fan should spin. Then you can test the output with a multimeter before connecting it to your gear. And that's all there is to it. If you like this, please like and subscribe to see more. And until next time, thanks for watching.